What's up, everyone? Sup, everybody. Sup, Rebecca and Carrie. Hey, hey. Man, so I'm wondering, Matthew, it looks like you are growing some new skills tonight. Is that right? That is correct. Ooh, so our fearless Carrie has been taking us live on YouTube, and it sounds like you were practicing that, or it looks like you were practicing it, I guess I should say. And so I thought... You know what? We didn't do a grow card last week or an encouragement card or an acknowledgement card. So in the vein of growing, I thought I'd just start us out tonight with a grow card. How does that sound? You guys are actually going to die because what we're doing, we're going to do tonight is man kind of fits this so beautifully. So for those of you that don't know, we're talking about these encouragement cards, these pack encouragement cards that we sell for care partners. Um, and so I just pulled one at random in the grow section. And here's what I got. Stretch your arms overhead. Take a deep breath and let it out slowly. So I can't wait for those of you viewing to see how that's going to fit into our first segment tonight. So, oh man, I love it when a plan comes together. It wasn't even planned. That's just dumb luck. That's what that is. Carrie, you said we have so much stuff coming up. You want to tell us about that and how others can grow with PAC? Absolutely. And in one minute, my YouTube video is going to start playing. <laughs> All right. Any minute now. Slowly, slowly. Try to catch it. Sorry, guys. No worries. I totally had the same experience because tonight was my first night actually getting us started. So I had the opportunity of getting the intro playing and figuring out all those pieces, all the amazing things that Carrie does in the background. I got a chance to try tonight. And so I totally can, can feel how that just all of the things loading in the background and everything else going on. Oh my gosh. And when you have yeah. multiple things rolling, it makes it even slower. So <laughs> right. all kinds of stuff. People are texting. Yeah. All right, guys. You know what? I changed some slides since we last saw this. So let me know what you notice. Thank you, all, as always, for sharing our free content out on Facebook and YouTube. We're on YouTube every week with SUP. Teep is out on Facebook. The Pack Live at Five team is out on Facebook. And we'll be back here again next week with um, SUP on thing. Yeah. All right, guys. Oh, you there. know what? I changed some slides since you last saw this. So let me know what you notice. <laughs> Knew it was going to happen. That's how long it took. <laughs> All right. So next week we'll be here with Sherry Thiessen. It's a doer from the week that we missed. We'll be happy to talk with her. And I think, oh, and Cheryl Buckholz will be on with us too. That'll be fun. Um, it is Pride Month, and we just switched all of our banners on social media. We're trying to um, let everybody know that we have an LGBTQ community webinar that um, about dementia in that community for professionals and for family, family, friends, members. If you go to our website and search for LGBTQ, those two webinars will come up and you can choose which one you want to watch. We are inclusive. We believe that relationships come first, no matter who, no matter what. Tomorrow, 
We have another Courageous Conversations premiering on Facebook. It's with the Black Dementia Minds group. So look for that. It's in two parts and on Facebook. I think it's premiering at 7 a.m. just before Tipa goes live at 8. Oh, ooh, Carrie. Yes, yes. Um, oh, man, you know what? Ooh. I actually, we so we set that up to go out at 10 a.m. Eastern oh. on Facebook. Um, and then 10 30, um, Eastern for YouTube. I so, see. When I saw that post, it was seven Pacific time. <laughs> nice. Time zones always get us. Thanks. Thanks for clearing that up for me, Matthew. So 10 o'clock tomorrow. Um, also tomorrow we're doing a welcome for the certified community, new members from last year up until now, like 549 new members coming into the certified community. Um, we are going to be on, uh, I'm sorry, on a webinar at three o'clock. Tipa will come and talk with us and you'll learn a lot more about what being in the certified community is all about. On Thursday, we have a webinar for coaches. Our coaches will be meeting um, to discuss the value of taking time to reflect. That's Thursday, the 17th, 10 a.m., another free webinar for those in our certified community. And next week is Prime Day. So we want to let you guys know, be on the lookout. Go over to um, Amazon if you want to order and uh, take advantage of Prime your Prime Days. Uh, Next week on Monday and Tuesday, the 21st and 22nd only, save up to $30 on Tipa Snow's DVDs on the Amazon store. We got some upcoming certifications in June and July. We have that trainer and consultant coming up. Feel free to go to our website and register for those if you don't have your certification yet or you're looking to add another one, another set of skills to your belt. And last, we're still, even still, in our early bird incentives period for the conference. You can register now, get 50% um, off one or the other, the relationship guidebook or seeing the GEMS workbook. You also get free decals, a nice welcome gift, your masks, take pictures of your masks and that tattoo so we can see what you're doing with that stuff. And this will lead right over to Rebecca. So one thing I wanted to mention, Carrie, about that early bird incentive is we're heading into, well, goodness. Yeah, I guess we're officially heading into the end of June because it's the 15th, so we're halfway through. And the early bird incentives are actually valid for our conference through the 5th of July because Oh, a lot of things get missed in that first week of July. And so if you sign up before then, you're going to get those incentives of discounts on some products um, and a webinar in July that's specifically for folks who have registered at that point for our conference. I know that November seems like so far away, but it's going to be here before we know it. And so you're going to get a little taste test of that with a webinar that TEEP is going to do for those who are early birds, those guys who are like, oh, I know I'm going to be there. I'm marking my calendar. I'm paying my money. And so we're going to have a webinar just for you guys on July 28th. Another big surprise that we have planned, I guess it's not really a surprise because I'm about to talk about it. And I'm pretty sure we have before, but a big change that we have for this year's conference is that we heard you you guys who were at the conference last year, we heard you. There were two big pieces of feedback that we're implementing based on feedback that we got across the board, families and professionals, um, people living with dementia. This is what we heard. We heard one is the conference. Oh, there's so much material, but it was a little too long for a virtual conference. And it is, it's hard to sit in this chair on the screen for a long period of time. And so we hear you. It's gonna be shorter this year, a little bit, but we still wanna get those CEs because we want professionals to come who are interested in those CEs. 
The other piece is we heard, oh, we need some more breaks throughout the day so that we can restore ourselves. So any of you out there that have ever planned a conference, you know, this is kind of a trying to meet the needs of different people. And we're really trying to do that with our conference this year. So between sessions, does anyone that's come to one of our trainings or certification courses, you know that, oh, it's kind of like drinking water out of a fire hose. Yeah. And there's so much content and every single word that comes out of Tipa's mouth, I mean, just like we learn and grow. And so we know that, and we know that the pack speakers are also that way. It's just, there's so much content. And so we wanted to give what we're calling self-care breaks between a couple of sessions each day. So you're going to have opportunities to go into different meeting rooms online. Again, this is all virtual. You're going to have a chance to go to meeting rooms and do certain activities. And so wanted to whet your appetite with an example of one of those rooms tonight. And so I've invited my friend Dawn Wiggins to come on. She's also a mentor um, with PAC. And she's actually going to give us a taste of the types of self-care breaks that we're going to have at conference. So Dawn, welcome to SUP. Hey, SUP guys. Thanks. Um, uh, thank you for having me. And this is, this is a program that I run that is super, super fun. So when you say exercise and you say fun together, usually people don't put those together <laughs> unless you're uh, Matthew and you enjoy the, uh, the challenge classes with us. <laughs> fun in a different way. So what we're doing is it's called Ageless Grace, and it's for um, mind and body fitness. It's based off neuroplasticity, and it's fun. So it's, it's meant to be done in a chair with bare feet. So I'll back my chair up in a minute after I get the music set up. And there is no right or wrong. So it's just about moving, expressing yourself. I'll explain the tools because it's, there's 21 tools that we use that are for lifelong uh, comfort and ease. So they activate all five uh, functions of the brain and all our body parts to keep us holistically well. So uh, I've got three songs picked out. I may or may not play the entire song for each one. And I need to know if the music's too loud or if you can still hear me when I'm um, doing these. The first tool I picked is called um, gentle geometry. And this one is for neuroplasticity, coordination, neural response, uh, multi-skilling and sense of humor. So you'll see me smiling a lot and just having fun. And the song I picked for this one is, um, I had Matthew in mind here, <laughs> here, Kansas City. All right, so. So this one here, what we're going to do is we're just going to draw shapes. So we can get moving, move your body, relax yourself for a minute. And let's take our right hand and draw a triangle. Try and do it the opposite way that you did. Now we're going to do it with both our left and our right. Go ahead and give it a try. I know it's not easy. All right. We're going to mix it up a little bit. And we're going to do a triangle with our right hand. And we're going to do a circle with our left. <laughs> Oops. I kind of paused. All right. You already saw that. Now give your body a shape. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take and draw a square with your right foot. Now, cool part about this is if you can't lift your foot up, you have sore legs or whatever, draw it on the floor. Take your toe and draw a square on the floor. And then try it with the other foot. Draw it on the floor, try it in the air. How easy is that? <laughs> All right, now what we're gonna do, let's take our nose and we're going to try and draw a star. Ready for this, a star with our nose. So 
And a Christmas tree, if you draw it properly, has geometric shapes. So let's go ahead and now let's draw the tree. And the trunk of the tree. Uh, and now what we're going to do is take our elbow and go ahead and put some balls on the Christmas tree. All right. So I don't know about you, but Don, when I invited you to come here tonight, I did not know that you were going to make me look like a fool on YouTube. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. This is and fun. Here are, and here we are rocking it. <laughs> I mean, this is awesome. I'm not, I'm not scoring very well. You know, I like to do things right. So I'm glad you said at the beginning, it's no right or wrong. And that's right, because the way we build new neural pathways is by messing up and doing things we've never done before. So if you've never done it, are you going to get it right? And yet, look at you shining, you pretty little gem. <laughs> oh, you're the best. Okay, so exercise um, for the second one is going to be an um, exercise tool called Team Fit. And this one's for muscle mass and coordination, so just overall physical strength. And, and this song is um, because I am a Canadian girl. So... Let's pick a sport that I love. And my favorite sport is a Canadian sport, hockey. So we gotta go get our hockey stick and put the puck down on the ice, keep that face off. Let's do some stick handling. Oh, let's skate backwards and stick handle backwards. Go backwards, awesome. All right, you're right in front of the net. Now it's your turn. Take a swing back and slap shot it in. Yay, you scored hard. That's awesome. All right, now, something I watch with my husband and something that Rebecca is very familiar with is what? Say, Rebecca, catch. Football. Is that so a football? I just tossed the football, Rebecca. Now I'm going to toss it to Matthew. Catch that football. All right, Carrie, here we go. Let's catch that football. All right. And what do the guys do when they get a touchdown in the NFL? Slam it down. Do your little NFL touchdown dance. <laughs> All right. Now, what's another sport you want to pick? Baseball? Okay, so put on your gloves. Other right hand, left hand, you got your glove. Throw the ball, catch it. Yes. Now we're gonna throw it. And who's gonna swing better? Swing better, 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 swing. <laughs> and you just hit it out of the park. So go ahead and run to first base. Go ahead and run to second base. Go ahead and run to third base. Now slide the home plate. Not <laughs> Way to go, awesome. Okay, so another sport. I'm looking out at the water and I'm in quarantine and I can't get out there right now, but Rebecca and I went swimming together in our sample the other day. And so let's do some swimming. Whatever stroke you like best, you can do breast stroke, you can do the front crawl, or the back stroke if you want to watch the sky, or the doggy paddle. Or we can just tread water. But my most favorite, Rebecca, is what? We're going to run and do what? A big old cannonball. Cannonball. <laughs> and all the water splashes up. All right. Is there another sport, Carrie? Basketball. Okay, basketball. That's a good one, especially if you're taller than me. <laughs> Take your basketball. Go ahead. We're going to play a game of 21. So it's your turn. Shoot. Ah, you missed. Okay. Catch the ball back or do a chest pass to your partner. And they're going to come and do a layup. Go ahead and do a layup. All right. Now we're going to take the ball. We're going to dribble it between hand and hand. And we're going to do a layup on the other side. Oh, that's not so easy. I can't even do one on the proper side. <laughs> All right, so there we get our sports. 
All right, way to go, team. That's fit. awesome, Don. And then finally, we're going to end it with um, juicy joints. And so this is like it said for joint mobility. So to loosen up all our joints. Um, and the song I picked for this one is, it's not a pack gem song, but it is called Gems. Okay, so Juicy Joints, let's start with our next one. We're gonna go look up. And down. And if you have any balance issues, if you get dizzy, you don't have to move your head to only the way that works for you. And so I'm going to go to the side, to the other side, and then I'm going to do a neck circle because I can, and then I'll do a neck circle the other way. Do what you can and what you're comfortable with. All right, now we're on to our shoulders. So. Just do some high and nice shoulder hold. Back. Feel that. Feel that. Now let's bring up the board. Stay down. And if you can, do it a little arm circle or big arm circle, whatever your shoulders are going to let you do. And then you can get bigger if you can. Now we're going to bring up the so challenging and it was not just that my body didn't want to do it but really my brain was going how can I possibly make this work was the triangles on one side and the circles on the other like guys how did you feel about that were you feeling real successful not so successful or did you feel like me oh Matthew got some was, coordination going I was feeling pretty good but that's only because I've had some experiences with Don before going through some stuff so I've got a little oh. bit of a leg up on you guys then you know so hmm. so you didn't mention this before <laughs> now hmm. we were keeping, we were keeping, keeping that in our back pocket <laughs> <laughs> well if I had known that I would have practiced more no that was super fun so I feel like if I was in a session where I was feeling like oh my goodness I'm a note taker so being like like, oh, I got to take a bunch of notes and I, I'm learning all this content. And then if I move my body in the way that we just did, I really feel like that can help me 
wake back up and be ready for your next session. What about you guys? And be okay with laughing at yourself. And, you know, as part of a group is like, oh, wow, this is like, this is really weird. Gary, I'm hoping that as our master Zoom support that you did some screenshots because I feel like you could bribe us all, but I don't care. I had fun. <laughs> See. <laughs> That was so awesome, Dawn. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on SUP and letting us get our bodies and minds moving with you. You're the best, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Dawn. Speaking of awesome things, Rebecca, so I have a really awesome gem to share with you guys tonight. She is actually somebody from our from the area that I live in, from the Casey area, and I actually got connected with her as I was starting with PAC and doing some stuff with PAC. And so I'm really excited about sharing her with you guys tonight. So Jen Walker, come on to the sub stage, <laughs> the Zoom stage and join us. Up the the sub. Jen. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just absolutely delighted to be here. So let me ask you, Jen, so as you were preparing to come live on this segment, I'm curious, did you play along with this or did you? I totally did. Watching and laughing. Oh, yay. Oh, I totally did. I found, especially at the end, the breathing exercises were really um, good at relaxing me from my uh, nervousness for tonight. So it helps a lot. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're here, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much. And yeah, I hear you there. I mean, I, I think no matter what situation you're in, man, if you went through those exercises and, and warm ups, you'd be ready to take on the world. I bet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or realize that you need to get a little better in shape. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. Or some joints maybe need a little more of TLC, a little popping and cracking for me, at least in my shoulders. Oh, man. Yeah. My uh, juicy joints were more like janky joints, so <laughs> need a little work there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so, welcome to SUP, Jen. And we're again, like you, like you said, like we said, we're so excited that you're here, and and I know you're excited to be here. And before we get into all of the cool stuff that you and I got a chance to talk about before we came on um, and did our little interview that we normally do. Tell us about you and how you got to work into the world of, of healthcare and especially working with folks living with brain change. Oh, thanks. That's such a, a wonderful question because, you know, I, I'm a little late in life at, in getting into nursing. So I am an RN by trade. I work in hospice currently for Lumacare Hospice, and um, I do a lot of education now um, in support of hospice and also with dementia. Um, but I came into all of this with working with those living with dementia kind of by chance. And when I was in nursing school, you know, we had maybe a paragraph, maybe two paragraphs about what dementia was. Didn't really go into uh, a lot of detail about it. And so when I started my nursing career, my very first patient that I had um, solo was also my very first nursing home patient and was also my first patient living with dementia. And um, I was told that he was very combative, that he would hit, kick, punch, bite, you name it, he did it. Um, he really didn't communicate a lot other than yes, no, but he was pretty um, much able to, to answer appropriately there. But he, a little background on him, he'd lost a couple toes, he had severe neuropathy, he had what's called a suprapubic catheter, which was a drain that drained his urine and um, needed care. And so I just said, whoa, I'm gonna watch you perform care first and see how that goes. And I'm gonna try to learn from you and I'll perform care next time. So I um, watched her, she came in, flipped the lights on, uh, pulled the covers back. They landed on his feet. His feet were very sensitive. So he started kicking and swearing. And she put a hand on his chest and said, calm down, Frank. And um, then she prepared the area to replace uh, the, the tube that was there. And in doing that, she pulled it out, shoved it in, didn't really tell him what was going on or ask permission. 
So we saw him flail around and hit and, and swear and the whole nine yards. And I just decided I wasn't gonna do that. So I didn't know what I was gonna do, but I wasn't gonna do that. And so I made sure with my interactions that I explained who I was, what I was doing, asked permission. I went slow, I provided detail and allowed him to participate in the care the best that he was able to. And that entire time, I had him for about four months, he did not um, have one combative episode with me. We ended every visit with a hug and um, can I put you in your chair? You would say yes and, and we would go about our way. And, um, and so that's really how I got into dementia care. Uh, I'll share a little bit more about Frank's journey uh, a little later on, but that's really what kind of told me that we, we don't really understand what we're doing when it comes to providing care and we make a lot of assumptions. So that's what started the whole journey. Yeah, and, and I'm curious with what you were talking about, um, when it came to the training that you actually got in school, um, especially when it came to the care of folks living with brain change, how, how much in depth did that really go to help you guys or prepare you guys for when you did go out and actually start working with folks um, who were living with brain change? I mean, was it, was it a lot of training that was detailed or was it just maybe if you were lucky and you were with somebody who was caring for or not? So, and it was not very detailed would be the short answer. I was lucky in that uh, we had some rotations that we could do. And I had an opportunity to go to a care community that utilized a tool called uh, the Virtual Dementia Tour. And so I did in my class probably get a little bit more of an in-depth experience than others did, but not not what I would say was a good, solid working knowledge in preparing me to care for people living with dementia. All of that came later. Yeah. And so so as you as you got started and and, and I love how you asked the the nurse, oh, you know, why don't you go ahead and try first? I just want to watch and see. So I want to I want to see what's going on. And then, um, you know, and then I'll try after that. And that sounds very familiar. A lot of times, especially with, <laughs> with pack and coaching, we'll say, would you, would you like to try first? Or would you like me to try first with you? And then you try with me, or do you want to go ahead and try? So this, this piece of you got to see what happened here and you got a chance to really make some shifts and try something different. And so stepping forward, you started to figure out, or you were telling me you were starting to figure out, man, I really need to, to build up my tools, build up my skill, build up my awareness with this piece. And so um, you started doing some, some research. So tell us about how you found PAC as you were going through that journey of trying to find more, because you were ready for more information, more things. Oh my goodness. So, so Almost all of my research starts with an internet search, and that is the handiest tool ever. Um, there were two things that kind of propelled that, though. The internet search, I would I would um, look for dementia training and education, and Tifa Snow's name would would come up all of the time. And so I started looking into her positive approach to care, and I noticed that she conducts these certifications, and it gave a great outline of what you would be learning. Um, I do believe at that time there were a few videos that kind of showcased some of the um, different things that you would be implementing into your practice. I watched some of her videos that she was leading for trainings um, to community events. And I was just captivated by her, honestly. She just had such a way of connecting. And so I wanted to learn more just off of that. So I found a certification course and went to Denver and participated in that. And oh my goodness, the aha moments, the connections that were made just by going through that was just profound. Yeah. And I learned how very little I actually know and, and how much there is still to know. Yeah, so you got a chance. We, we call the, that the TIPA effect or the drinking the Kool-Aid. Yes. <laughs> everybody, everybody, when they see TIPA, they get a chance to be around TIPA. It's like an instant hook. Um, and you just, you, you want to know what she has to say and you want to yes. be a part of whatever she's doing. And so, um, yeah, so it's always such a great experience. And no matter how many times you see her, even if she's doing the same 
presentation, webinar, or even certification course, it's like you, you're always getting something new out of it. You're always building more and learning more because she always has so many layers. Um, she does. But yeah, so, so you got a chance to go and do this. And you also got connected with a group in Kansas City, too, at the same time. Tell us about that group you got connected with. So there was a group starting um, of other people that worked in different facets with dementia. And we put a group together called the Casey Memory Cafe. That was our first endeavor. And so the idea behind that group was to um, invite people living with dementia and their care partners into a safe community environment that still kept them focused on things related to memories, to Kansas City experiences, to cultural events. And it also brought the very important um, aspect of socialization together. We had a snack, we would talk about the topic and do reminiscence. So for example, we had uh, Carly Ritter from, from one of our local news channels for the news for the weather uh, segment. And she showed showed a, a really neat little narrative of how they forecast the weather. And so after that was done, we talked about well, before we had all this fancy, these fancy gadgets that could tell us about the weather, how did you know a storm was coming? What did, um, if you lived on a farm, how did you know that that significant weather was coming? And so it really allowed them the opportunity to open up and share those experiences from a time that was long ago. And so it was very successful. And unfortunately, like many things, COVID kind of shut that down. But the library that we partnered with, the Kansas City Public Library, the Plaza Branch, um, has been holding them virtually until we can get back together, hopefully this fall. So we got connected there. From our work with the Memory Cafe, we um, saw it credentialing with Dementia Friendly Kansas City, which is an offshoot of Dementia Friendly America. And our first big project was the airport in making that uh, our new build that dementia friendly. So we're actually going to reconvene hopefully soon to talk about some training techniques that will be useful. And you better believe positive approach to care will be a part of that. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. And and we know that there are some folks out there actually doing trainings with TSA and things like that to, to help in those uh, settings. So it's so cool to hear how so many folks are on the same track. They're doing a lot of the same things in their areas to really support all of our folks out there who are living with brain change and their care partners because their care partners are trying to help them in situations and do different things um, or go places. And the, the more that we can be aware of what we can do to help support as a community, um, the better that it can be. And that is so important. Um, and, and, Going on to that community piece, you had told me about that you started up some support groups as well. You started running some support groups. So tell us a, a bit about like what you were doing with those support groups. Sure. So what I did with the support groups was um, I partnered with different care communities and help them mostly for the family members of the residents, but sometimes some uh, some other participants would attend as well. And initially, my, my whole premise was, you know, I would lead the support group with, okay, it's a caregiver support group. We need to take care of ourselves and provide self-care. Go out to lunch with your friends and make sure you get your nails done. And I was, you know, over a period of time looking around and I felt as though I, were, I was not connecting with the participants, not giving them what they needed. They very politely listened and came back each month, but I could tell there was a real disconnect. And so um, ironically, after attending my, my certification course with Positive Approach to Care, I learned about the adult learning um, cycle and, and some of the different ways in which we need to connect fundamental ideas about what this disease is before we can start giving those ways to interact with it. And so it changed my approach a little bit and um, got a lot more positive feedback and, and those aha moments that you can see just clicking um, as you're hitting on something, explaining why their loved one does the things that they do, um, really, really changed things up. Um, so 
with COVID, of course, those got put on hold, but we are uh, currently working with some communities to bring those back. So hopefully we will start engaging again. Sure, and and, and I, the, I remember you talking about that, that piece with the support groups where when you first started, it was, you were there and you were trying to do the best you could to give them the tools they needed to take care of themselves. Um, but you got a chance to see um, another way that you, or another thing you could bring into that support group um, using that adult experiential learning cycle and, and taking them through those steps, especially with learning about the disease process. And then you also told me a bit about doing the hand under hand and supportive stance and how that really helped some of the folks there. Tell us a little bit about some of those experiences with your, your folks there at the support group and doing that. Oh my goodness, it made such a difference. So the, the biggest one that the family members were talking about was, was mealtime. You know, of course, they're very worried that their loved one is not seeming interested in eating and drinking, but there's a real fine line between not being interested and not understanding the utensils, how to use them and that whole mechanism. Um, and so we talked about how we typically try to solve that problem by feeding them directly, you know, putting the spoon up to their mouth and kind of get the spoon to their lips and we're kind of assaulting them in a way, just forcing that in and how our loved one reacts with um, pulling back or they're, they're not really sure what you're doing to them. Or that doesn't feel familiar. There's no real place in their memory bank where they're saying, oh, I'm fed, this is what I do, I open my mouth and I, I take that food in. So I was able to show them the, the um, hand under hand technique where you get in the supportive stance and you actually help them lift their own hand to their mouth in a natural movement um, and process and, and how we would have a better result that way. And so what was really cool about that was people would go home and actually try it and I, probably wasn't perfect, but they tried it that new way and got better results and felt encouraged by that. And so we talked about the supportive stance as well. And um, I loved particularly in, in my training, and I hope it's okay to share this part, but doing the, you know, scuba vision and the binoculars and um, helping them understand the different line of vision changes and how our approach matters as well and showing how that supportive stance is not as threatening um, or intimidating to, to their loved one really helped as well. Those are just two tricks of the trade I will never stray away from. God, that's so awesome. And yeah, I remember you telling me about some of those stories and it's just so cool. You, you can't get enough of that. And I feel like either as a, as a PAC trainer or a PAC coach or consultant or an engagement leader, those, those moments, those aha moments that people have. And then when they come back and they're like, I tried this thing out and it worked. It, I mean, they were, they ate everything or I, I could tell they really wanted to be there. They really wanted to do this. Or I got them to talk to me. Um, they actually said something to me in that moment and they haven't talked in a while. And so it's just so cool to hear those stories. It really does. Yeah. It, it feeds the soul <laughs> and it, it, it fires you up uh, when it comes to the use of this stuff. And, and it gets you being like, man, I got to get this out there to more people. It does. Um, and I learned so much from them and their interactions and using it as well. So it, it works both ways. Yes, it does. That's for sure. And, and you were talking about how this darn COVID thing hit and it really put a lot of things on hold. Did. But you you really found a creative way to still get out there and to to try to make a difference one way or another or do something fun, um, especially with your role. And so I've got some pictures that I'm going to show. And I would really love for you to tell us some more about these pictures as we go through. So I'm going to bring them up here. <laughs> and and so. This first picture here, uh, yeah, I, I'd really like to know. So, what was going on here? What were were you and Santa doing here? So, well, um, so usually what we do at the holidays is we have lots of Christmas parties. We bring carolers in. We 
um, pass out presents. We're really involved with our communities in making that a special time for the residents. And, and this year we were not allowed in the buildings. Um, we had to kind of think of other ways to still engage them. So there were some buildings that I coordinated window visits with and I made my husband dress as Santa Claus and um, I dressed as the Grinch, you know, because COVID's green and the Grinch is, you know, grumpy and COVID's made us grumpy. And so I just thought, what a perfect combination. And we went around to the windows for the residents who wanted to participate. We had uh, Christmas music playing if it was warm enough for them to crack their windows. And we just kind of went around and tried to make them smile and bring a little bit of joy. And, and it worked. It was so much fun. Um, and I think the communities that participated in that really uh, had some enjoyment from it too. So, so that's what that one was all about. I always find the ugliest Christmas sweaters every year, the tackiest that I can find and um, do my community events in them. And so this year we just did them outside. <laughs> that is so cool. And so the next one here, ooh, tell, tell us about this one here. So Easter was, um, this is when things were just starting to open back up a little bit more. So I was able to go in um, as the Easter Bunny and there were a couple of memory care communities that had me come in and let me um, interact with the residents. And just uh, this video or this photo kind of captures a really tender moment. She just loved the Easter Bunny. And I was told I had the very softest costume of all the Easter Bunnies. So they all uh, enjoyed you know, the touching aspect of it, tactile um, stimulation, remembering some of their Easter's with their kids was really touching as well. So I got probably more out of it than the residents did, but that one was one of my favorites. Yeah, that is so cool. And then going into our, our <laughs> next piece here. So you, uh, you told me a, a, a story about this one and it, and it had to do with something we all experience, right? It's that piece of we go, we try something, ooh, yes. something happens and we learn to make a shift probably. But, but tell us about this particular, um, for, for this particular visit set that you were doing. Sure. So for St. Patrick's Day, I thought it would be fun to go around as a leprechaun. And while it was well received by many, I noticed with some of my uh, residents who had some cognitive impairments, some of them approached me with a little bit of fear and trepidation. Um, so it was not as warmly received as I was with um, the Easter Bunny costume. And so you learn that that does probably look a little bit scary. My face is covered up. I have a a, a beard on and I might be approaching people with a little bit of impish curiosity and and that might not resonate quite as well with some. So I did learn that um, maybe we'll figure something else out for St. Patrick's Day next year. Yeah, well, and like you said, that mask part, boy, I tell you, sometimes that mask part with a beard doesn't always go over very well. I think I've kind of learned <laughs> that sometimes too myself. Yeah. Um, but this, so this last one here actually is just a recent picture. So I went on and I grabbed a hold of this one. So, <laughs> so, so tell us, tell us about this one, what the plans are for this one. Cause you haven't had a chance to go, to go with this one yet, but there are some plans from what I understand. Going tomorrow, starting tomorrow. So in healthcare, we celebrate anything that is celebratable basically. And so this particular week kicks off, um, CNA week where we appreciate those that are providing that frontline care and and spend the most time with these wonderful residents too. So I go around and try to celebrate them, try to do things for both the CNAs and their communities. It's another opportunity to maybe bring some smiles. So um, I've got this fun inflatable unicorn and I'm calling it the Lumacorn because I work for Lumacare. So um, so just trying to have fun wherever you can get smiles and and elicit laughter. I mean, we know that laughter is such a big important part of brain health overall. And in fact, we have laughing yoga sessions that go on just to try to make those neural pathways connect a little better. So, so I try to approach things with as much fun as I can have, especially as, as we went through that last year. And, 
you know, get those smiles and that laughter going any way that I can, even if it means dressing up in ridiculous costumes. <laughs> but it is fun. I do enjoy it. It is. It's so awesome. And I, I, I told you, I, it brings such a huge smile to my face every time I see the pictures you put out there. So thank you so much for, for doing that, because not many people go that far they to, uh, to go out and to, to really engage and to put those smiles. I mean, they try their best in their settings and do what they can, but that that's definitely another level of, of, of going through to help people really get a good laugh or, or to just smile and, and reminisce. So that is so cool. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so now that things are opening back up and, and are starting to look towards getting back out there and, and we're able to maybe start thinking about doing trainings in person again, or some people actually are, yeah. you, you had some plans and you came up with something that you wanted to do and you got it rolling and it entailed starting your own business. So tell us about what you've started and what your plans are going forward now that we're coming out of this whole thing that is COVID or at least somewhat coming yeah. Well, you know, I've been very encouraged. I've been very blessed and very encouraged in my uh, in my industry and in my profession. I've had a lot of opportunities to kind of pave my own way and get a little creative with um, what is most important to the community that I serve and the residents within those communities. And so, um, so much of what I do is need based. So I see what the needs are, and I try to meet that need and be a partner both to um, care communities as well as the residents that dwell within them. And one of the things that I've been so fortunate to see is this evolution of this interest in becoming proficient in dementia. And so um, I am always seeking out my own certification. I, I never refer to myself as an expert because to me that means you have like the highest supreme knowledge. And every time I I take on a new level of, of learning, I realize how much I didn't actually know. And so I, I don't like to call myself an expert in anything, but I did get my trainer certification in a couple different areas. Um, we talked about positive approach to care. Um, and then I also have my second wind dreams trainer certification and my um, certification through the Nat National Council of Certified Dementia Practitioners as a, um, certified Alzheimer's disease and dementia care trainer. And so what that means is that I can lead a, an eight hour workshop, a seminar that will allow them um, to pursue their certified dementia practitioner credentials. So it, it elevates their learning. It gives them a broad overview of the different challenges and the complexities of the disease. And so in order to do that, I did form my own company called Dementia Solutions KC. And, um, and it's just really the vehicle that I use to be able to offer these trainings. There are some trainings that I think should be free. I think knowledge is power. And if I can empower somebody to do a great job at providing care, I'm happy to participate and do those. And so I do um, in services as well. And um, I will, uh, sometimes implement facets of the positive approach to care in there and also use stories. I shared the, the story of Frank. I Earlier, I started to tell you about him. I'm going to kind of wrap this part of it up with it because um, I think it, it's what got me into this and realized that there was a need. And when I tell the story and I share it, I think other people get it. So, so Frank was declining over a period of time. Um, I figured he had maybe a couple weeks left um, of, of living. He was in that final terminal de decline and not really eating a whole lot and was bed bound. And I went in one day and he wasn't in his bed. And I went to the nurse's desk and I was like, where's Frank? I thought he died and they didn't tell me. And they said, can he have a good day? He's in the dining room. And I thought, oh, she must be new. Frank doesn't go to the dining room anymore. You know, me with all my wisdom, with my four months of training with him. Um, so I went to the dining room. The first section was the, the room where people feed themselves. The second one was the assisted dining room. And I got to the dividing line. Frank was in his usual corner in his wheelchair and he holds up his cup and he says, I've been waiting for you. I'm going, what the heck is that? And this is... <laughs> 
it, he said yes or no this whole entire time. And as I get closer, he says, wait or bring one for my friend. And as I approach him, I notice he has a variety of beverages and um, I'm just fascinated. And I say, well, hey, Frank, how are you? And he goes, oh, I'm so tired. I've been out all night. And I'm thinking, what kind of place is this that lets the residents out at night? I mean, what do I know? And so I'm just going with it. And I said, wow, really? Well, what have you been doing? And he says, oh, I've been visiting with friends I haven't seen in years. We just laughed and talked and I'm just watching and he's downing a big shake at this particular time. And I said, well, gosh, Frank, if, if I knew all it would take to get you to eat was a shake, I'd have brought you one, I'll bring you one tomorrow. And he said, oh no, I won't be here tomorrow. I said, well, where are you going, Frank? He said, I'm gonna go uh, get Margaret and we're gonna go to Chicago to a convention. So Margaret was his wife. She had been deceased for 14 years at that point. And uh, Chicago and convention was uh, what he did when he was a photography salesman. And so I just stood up and I said, wow, Frank, that sounds so beautiful. I tell you what, I'm gonna let you finish lunch. I'm gonna go visit another friend and I'll come back to say goodbye. As I got ready to leave, he grabbed my arm, pulled me down to him, kissed me on the cheek. And he said, thank you for taking good care of me. And he went into a coma that night and he died two days later. And why I like to talk about it with the trainings and why they're so important is because that interaction with Frank taught me that we have to do better. We have to work harder to try to understand their needs. And that when we take it for granted that they don't have any idea or awareness of what's going on, we miss some really key things. He did know what was going on. His brain didn't allow him to share that with me during the course of our, our time together. But he gave me the greatest gift I'd ever been given in that I, he chose to let those, those connections be made with me and, and still find that way to tell me that it was important to him how I took care of him. And so, um, so when I share that story and when I talk about the importance of understanding the disease, I can come in and talk about challenging behaviors. I can come in and talk about communication techniques. But if I don't teach you what is happening in their brain first, then you're not gonna really get all of those important connections that we help uh, make with them. And so, so I just, I feel some things are free. I feel some things, you know, you, you're trying to, to elevate your, your credentials and your education, that's different. But if you don't have a training program in place and you are a care community, you're really missing the opportunity to provide that wonderful care. And, and they deserve it. They're worth it. Oh, so true. And, and, and looking at that, that final piece there that you shared, and thank you so much for, for wrapping that up and giving us the, the story of Frank and, and, and letting us know, because that was such a powerful part when you and I were talking together. Um, I'm a big heart first person, so <laughs> that, that definitely it hits me right in the heart. It's so awesome to hear those moments, um, to, to see that gem shine in that moment. Um, and I like that last piece, that, that advice of, look, folks out there, we got to step it up. We got to make a change. We got to do something different here. What we're doing right now isn't enough. Right. Um, and, and we got to do something different. And it just makes me think about after tonight and, and, and seeing Don's piece and seeing what you just shared with us, even though we, you and I have already talked. Um, but now again, the second time for me, I think it's that piece of realizing just how much we really need to, to get out there and just do everything we can to help support folks in our community, right? Because yeah. that's the biggest thing. It's easy to, to sit back and say, well, you know, I've learned some knowledge and I've learned some really cool things to help people who are living with brain change. But really a big part of the power that comes with that is then going out and sharing it and trying to help others who haven't gotten that yet or right. help them understand better so that they can give better support. So for me, my biggest takeaway for tonight is that is we've got to get involved more with our community. We've got to get out there and do more for the folks um, who haven't had that exposure yet or those pieces. And so I'm curious as we're, we're looking at wrapping up tonight's episode and everything, um, wondering with Rebecca and Carrie and Don, 
um, what your guys' takeaway is from tonight and all of the really cool stuff that we got to experience and talk about. Well, I just thank you, Jen, for the great work you're doing. I'm amazed always with all of our shining gems that come on and the stories that they share. So thank you um, for what you're doing, making a difference in your community. And, and I would say for me, a big takeaway was um, just your sensitivity to and the importance of all of our sensitivity to how you thought um, folks were going to respond to the leprechaun because of how they had responded to other, um, you know, situations and yet saying, okay, well, mm, I need to shift that a little bit. And, you know, I need to think that through and, and, and just that sensitivity to, it's not always going to work for everyone. And so how can we continue to get better and grow and um, continue to make it better for those living with brain change? So very cool. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. I guess I'll, I'll take my turn because my takeaway is um, as a nurse as well, you know, it's, it's easy when it comes natural to us um, working with people with dementia. When I first started in nursing, I was 19 and I just loved working with people with dementia when other people were frustrated. But as Jen says, you know, you watch and you learn and you know, there's, there's more out there. There's a better way into, you know, just not just assume that, okay, I'm good at this and I'm okay with being good, being curious, what more, can, how, how else can I add to my knowledge base, but then being aware of the fact that I've got a lot here and knowing when, you know, when it's time to share with others, because some people are really, really good at spreading the knowledge and sharing properly and not to keep it to yourself because there are people out there that like to keep it to yourself. So my takeaway is just stay curious and, and be willing to share and, and open for other opportunities. So thank you, Jen, that was awesome. Thank you so much. I agree with you hundred <laughs> percent. Share knowledge, it's free. And sometimes you have to pay for it, but for the most part, there's tidbits you can, it's just, you just should do it because it's the right thing to do. I, I liked your story, Jen, about um, working with the care partners and they came back every time they came always were coming back um, and you were you were noticing that lack of connection like am I actually are they actually getting help or you know I, I noticed in our care partner support series it's like a five or I think it's a five week program and at the end you've learned something and you go away with these skills and I know a lot of support groups that are about coffee and donuts <laughs> you know and you're like I could be giving so much more and you learn these pack skills you're like if I just connect a little bit then oh I can we can really start to have a conversation and get through some of this surface things I really like that thank you well, and, and so I'm just curious, Jen, if there was anything that you would like to add as we close out tonight or, or takeaway you might have had from tonight with everything we've talked about um, or, or some advice you have for somebody maybe in, in the same position you were before you started with all of this. Um, I would just say, first of all, uh... Dawn showed me that I have absolutely no ability to do two things at one time. And so <laughs> I could not make the triangle and the circle at the same time. I made some weird configuration that I'm not even sure is a real shape. Um, so I need to work on that. Uh, I, loved, I loved what Dawn brought at the beginning of the series and how important it is. I, I think I'm gonna incorporate that in some of my trainings too about just the need to loosen up sometimes, even when we're having important meetings or even when we're about to embark on a long learning experience, just to get some of those in and open our minds and get that blood flowing. I think I can see lots of opportunities to utilize um, what we learn. As far as advice goes, um, the stay curious comment was really a favorite of mine. You have to want, to, first of all, to make a difference. And I think a lot of us in healthcare are in healthcare 
because we want to make the difference, but we don't always know how. So seek the knowledge out. There are so many wonderful resources, especially on TIPA Snow site that are free and that are just some foundation educational uh, videos that I think are such a great start uh, and build on that. You know, if, if you really want to get certification, you can save your money up, you can plan for it, you can can do that and what a wonderful feeling it is to have that next level of knowledge and that validation that you know your stuff and you can go out and, and start imparting it to the masses and and share your knowledge don't don't be stingy with it at all just uh, go into it with this you know we you know my my little catchphrase with dementia solutions kc is better training equals better understanding equals better care and I firmly believe that. I think that if the more we know, the, the better we do. So um, just share your knowledge and, and work together to create a better community for them and normalize dementia as it's gonna be here, whether we want it to be or not. That is so cool. Thank you so much, Jen, for sharing that with us and sharing all of the cool stuff you've been doing. Thank you, Dawn for coming on tonight and showing us the cool stuff that you did with the, I, I mean, I'm like, I'm ready, I think to go run a 5k or something right now. I've been itching to, to go. If I could have taken you guys with me and been out there running and done this at the same time, I would have, cause you got me pumped up. So thank you for that. And of course, thank you, Rebecca and Carrie for being such awesome co-hosts. You guys are amazing. I couldn't ask for a better team. Um, Thanks, we appreciate Matthew. all you guys out there. Thanks for joining us tonight and on SUP. And we can't wait to see you all next week. Next week.